Look, I'm going to tell you one more time. Add up this column of expenses for repairs. Yeah. Great, great. Now add up this column for monthly payments after two years. Uh-huh. Terrific. Now what do you got? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? The price of my car is a lot higher than these figures. No, no, forget we... about that. Look, look, this is, this is the third time I've gone through this worksheet. Look, this here number is what you save. It's the joy of a new car. Yeah, but I don't no, see... No, don't give me any I... lip. Owning a new car is fun. You're going to like it, and you're going to be through them doors again in 24 months, and we're going to do this all over again. No way. I'm tired. I'm confused. Take a hike. Wait! Wait! No, don't go! Look, we'll cut a deal on the radio. I'll throw in a cassette deck. No, no, wait! Don't go! Don't go! Don't go! Don't go! <sighs> don't go! Wow, who, 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 who's deal, whose deal is it? Where am I? You're in the studio. Oh, oh, what happened? You were having a nightmare. Oh, well, at least I was asleep. Why do we have to get up so early to tape these things? Oh, I'm sorry. Look, we have to get started. Good morning, everyone. The director, he's still in town. <laughs> stay calm, stay calm. Look, we'll talk later. I gotta go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, no, wait, wait, don't go, don't go. Look, don't go. I, I, I... Well, let's get rolling, folks. Time is money. You all set, Dave? I'm ready. Places, please. Uh, do you have copy? Right here. We'll follow every word and keep your eye on Roscoe. Tape rolling and action. Hi, guys. Well, everyone looks bright-eyed and bushy-tailed this morning. So get your pencils sharpened because today we're going to highlight the arithmetic section of the presentation. Now, as a reminder, let me review our present status. We've presented the concept board clearly and concisely. Most importantly, we've landed the customer on a car. So our next job, and one which we'll examine in detail today, is the presentation of the plan comparison worksheet. Using the plan, how do we get the customer into the worksheet? A good bridge would start, come on back to my office and let me show you two ways to get your car. The conventional way in the plan. I'll show you both and let you decide which way you'd like to go. And then using third-party numbers, you can begin the worksheet designed to compare buying a car the conventional way with the plan. Turn the papers around so it faces the customer, hand them a pencil, and let them write the numbers. Dave, we've already gone over this, and I'm tired. Imagine how a customer might feel if a salesman spent too much time on it. I understand. I also know that you know more about it than I know about it, and the more I know about it, the less I remember about it. I see. Well, let's make it easier for you. Let's look at this sheet as four separate but linked sections. One, the conventional deal explanation. Two, the conventional deal obligations. Three, the plan explanation. And four, the plan options. And we'll take them one at a time with some common customer objections and some common errors you might be guilty of yourself. I don't feel guilt, Dave. I feel remorse. I just want to sell more cars. Stop begging, Roscoe. It's bad for him. Yeah? How do you close? With a gun? Roscoe, listen up and take notes. Here we go. Section one. The conventional deal opens with a dialogue. I had a customer in here the other day. We were talking about a car in the $10,000 price range. Write that in, would you? We wanted to put a down payment of $2,000. That left a balance of $8,000. We assumed an average tax on the selling price of 6%. So that makes the total unpaid balance $8,600. When you're through with that, have the customer look at a range of payment cycles. Now, on a balance of $8,600, using the factors we discussed earlier, Payments over 24 months would come out to $430. Over 36 months, they'd come out to 344. And for 48 months, it would be $258 a month. Then stress the 48-month trading cycle. Why waste time with that now? Why can't you stress it when you get to the plan side? You will. But long-term financing is a serious problem the industry is facing today. We're also well aware of normal customer attitude. Most people want a new car every two or three years. Unfortunately, when a customer is placed in long-term financing, they're unable to get a new car for five or six years. 
The worksheet easily demonstrates this dilemma. Everybody got that? So what am I doing wrong in this section of the worksheet? Not much, I hope. Based on what I've described, anyone want to make a guess of some common errors? Not allowing the participation of the customer. Right. Let the customer fill out the numbers themselves. Anything else? Using a prepared worksheet? With numbers already filled out. That's a good one. <laughs> I've done it. Yeah, well, don't do it again. That goes under not allowing the customer to participate. Anybody else? Speedballing through the paperwork? Okay. Moving along too rapidly and losing the customer in a jumble of numbers. And how about not using third-party numbers? In an attempt to save time, you use actual customer figures, and the guy gets hung up on price. Very bad idea. Okay, let's move along now to section two, the conventional deal obligations. Any transitional statements for us here? Just stress what the customer owes after 24 months of payments. Let them see their obligation to the bank and fill in this section. This customer has 24 additional months of payments that total $6,192. Now, that's their obligation on a two-year-old used car. In addition, the customer will be going into the third year and incurring normal maintenance costs, which average $65 to $70 a month. You said emphasize the importance of the second year position in the conventional deal? I remember that. You still owe on the conventional side will be compared later on to you owe nothing, but you own three options on the plan side. Not bad, Roscoe. Emphasize the importance of plan trading cycles and the advantages it provides, such as avoiding maintenance, getting into a new car faster, getting a better equipped car. In essence, the joy of owning a new car. Anyone have any problem with this section? A guy asked me once where I got the maintenance expense numbers from. Well, what did you say? I said I didn't know. When the guy stopped laughing, did you close the deal? Not funny, Roscoe. Tell the customer those numbers were obtained from a U.S. Department of Transportation study, not a Ford study. The study examined the average normal operating cost for the average driver in the course of a year. The study concluded that $65 to $70 per month was an accurate accounting. On the other hand, a customer might have had little, if any, trouble with his old car. Conversely, it might have averaged more. Keep it simple. Anything else? Okay, let's make the trip over to Section 3, the plan explanation side of the worksheet. Does anybody remember the transition we used to get to it? Mm-hmm. I have it in my notes. So do I. <laughs> you wrote it down. No, no, but I did Xerox your notebook last night. Anybody need copies? It's not very legible. You copied my notebook? If I knew your handwriting was so poor, I wouldn't have bothered. Uh, let's see. See, we want to emphasize the transition from the left side of the worksheet to the right side of the worksheet. Uh, ah, here, uh, here it is. Uh, read it out loud. Okay, this is from your first lecture. Uh, a good bridge might be... Do you understand all that? That's not new to you. It's the conventional way to buy a car, and there's nothing wrong with it. But Ford said there's got to be a better way. That's why they came out with the plan. Now, let's take a look at another customer who gets a car using the plan. Exactly. The benefits of leasing. I got a problem with that. But if I open my mouth, that director will shove his arm down my throat and pull my heart out. What did my friend say about leasing? Something about disclosing too early? What exactly did he say? I can't seem to remember. I've done it and it works as long as you keep your cool. Uh, can I have some more hot sauce, please? Just don't mention leases. What you do is you race through the worksheet, zip down to the options, and get the signature on the bottom line. Is that legal? Hey, you want to move iron? Besides, it's a real good deal, and nobody gets hurt. I mean, why ruin things by disclosing the entire plan as a lease? I don't know. You don't know what? I don't know why they don't have enough chips around here. Look, look, don't get me wrong. I like the plan, but a lot of people get jumpy around leases. Now, listen to me. I know. Want another drink? What? You want a refill? Oh, yeah. yeah. Waiter, uh, bring him one of those drinks with the volcano on it, and I'll have the one with the, uh, the umbrella. 
finally, the hot sauce. Oh, this will make your socks roll up and down. You should try some. No, 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 no. That, that stuff's too dangerous for me. Ah, the trouble with you is you don't have any Mexican blood. Uh-huh. Ah! Ah! That's a fine transition to get to the plan side, except you forgot one thing. If the customer says this sounds like a lease, respond, have you ever leased a car before? If they say no, respond, I know exactly how you feel. I wouldn't want to lease a car the conventional way myself. The plan uses the benefits of leasing while still keeping the major benefit of buying, the potential of building equity. But, but Dave, what if, they, what if they've leased a car before and say they don't want to do it again. Well, the answer's the same, Roscoe. Don't run and hide. A customer may know nothing about leases or may have had a bad experience or misunderstanding about a lease. Remember, to emphasize the uniqueness of the plan from a conventional lease, such as lower monthly obligations, shorter terms, no resale risk or upside down equity. Now let's go through the plan explanation. Let's fill in these numbers. A $10,000 car at $2,000 down with a balance of $8,000. In most states, an immediate cash flow advantage occurs right here because we're taxed only on the money put out. So now we have an unpaid balance of $8,120. Now, whether or not this tax advantage exists in your state is not critical. The plan really starts here. When we turn the sheet over and ask the customer to write down $8,120 and then subtract $5,500, the car's value in two years guaranteed by Ford Motor Company. We deduct the value right now. All they have to pay on is $2,620, plus the cost of the use of the money. That total obligation over the next two years, 24 payments of $198 per month, plus 6% tax, brings the total to $210 per month. Here's where we emphasize the comparison between the 48-month conventional deal and the 24-month plan cycle. The customer discovers that he has a cash flow advantage of $48 per month over two years, which adds up to $1,152 in savings. Now, has anyone experienced any customer objections up to this point? One big one. I've worked with some customers who hear that you're saving them $48 per month, but they see that at the end of that time, they don't own anything. Well, some have told me that they would rather pay the extra money and own the car. One of the main reasons for developing the worksheet is that customers have blind spots concerning term. And a problem that arises with improper use of the worksheet is the development of customer attitudes about term. What didn't they really see? I don't know. I can't see it either. They didn't see in this example that $48 per month extends for 24 months. They didn't look over at the buy side to notice it would be a much larger payment for 24 months. The worksheet is designed to make this clear. Got it. Anything else? I've had customers who know leases ask if they have to shell out a down payment. In this example, you do it to keep the comparison of a conventional deal and the plan equal. In actuality, it helps lower the monthly payments. Yeah, but if there's no down, there's no plan and no sale. No, 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 that's not true. Remember, you can reduce the down by increasing the monthly payments. On the other hand, if you ask a customer how much they want to put down, they'll respond as little as possible. Right. A low down leads to higher monthly payments and probably lower gross with a potential credit problem. I've got one. Shoot. A guy asked me where I got the payment number. Well, that'll require a little bit more math, so let's do this together. Explain it on the reverse of the worksheet. It's 8120 minus 5500, which leaves 2620 to pay over 24 months. 
that comes to $109 per month. Now, there's also a cost of money fee of 1.1% based on $8,120, which comes out to $89 per month in addition to the monthly payments. That adds up to the $198 per month. And notice in this example, we're using 1.1% for cost of money. This may vary slightly with each dealership. OK, now let's get into section four of the worksheet, the close. The three options will point out two of the real attitude problems in the car business today. Anybody remember what they were? Intimidation and threats. Roscoe, you're supposed to help. Just adding a little levity to the situation before we all go into a numbers coma. The attitude problems I was referring to are resale risk and equity. Now, a good transition would start saving money is not the best part of the plan. The best part comes at the end of two years. Now, the customer on the plan does not owe anything as compared to the customer in a conventional deal. But they do own three great options, and that will provide more control over their car costs than they've ever had before. Let's briefly review each option. The first option is called the equity option. At the end of two years, whatever the car is worth over the guaranteed price can be used as the down payment on another new car. The second option is the safety, or the walk-away option. Let's say for some reason the car is worth less than the expected guaranteed value. Using the conventional system, this downside loss remains with you, and you can become what is termed upside down. Conversely, the plan allows you the option to walk away from the loss, free from any obligation. The third option is the purchase option. If at the end of two years you wish to keep the car, all you have to do is complete the purchase. The customer is then faced with the reality of both the conventional deal and the plan. The salesman can press home with, well, which makes more sense to you. What are some of the common mess-ups in this section? Well, they're easy to spot and easy to fall into, allowing the customer to divert you with too many questions before reaching the end of the presentation. and forgetting to highlight the walkaway option, which emphasizes to the customer the possibility of a downside loss and the means to escape from it. Well, listen, I don't know about you guys, but I need a break. Is that it? I hope so. This is worse than jet lag. We're done. Save the lights. That's a wrap. Oh, say, Roscoe, you didn't mess up this time. What's the matter? Feeling you? Well, why drag out the pain? Besides, I have a date tonight. A date, huh? With whom? Oh, with his training manual. No, but, 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 but... No, 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 but you have to study. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you need a little work on your closing technique, Roscoe. Come on, everybody, let's grab a bite to eat. Hey, let me ask you, are you guys really awake in class, or are you just good at dozing off in a sitting position? <laughs> uh, guys, I... I love you guys. 